Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hi, dear friends. Welcome to Kardec Radio with another chapter of Living Spring by Emmanuel Trushika Xavier. I'm your host, Leona Willemse, and today we are going to read chapter 88 of Living Spring, coming to one's senses. And it is in Luke 15, verse 17, it says, When he comes to his senses. This little excerpt from the parable of the prodigal son awakens invaluable consideration about life. Judas dream about the political domination of the gospel. He was interested in the compulsory transformation of people. Nonetheless, when he finally came to his senses, it was too late because the divine friend had already been delivered into the hands of cruel judges. Other characters in the good news came to their senses, senses in time to accomplish soul-saving um, rectific rectification. Mary Magdalene had placed her inner life in the hands of wicked spirits. But when she came to her senses under the influence of Christ, she realized how much time she had wasted and she attained the loftiest spiritual worthiness through humility and selflessness. Intimidated by threats of persecution and suffering, Peter denied the master. However, when he came to his senses at a um, compassionate look from Jesus, he wept bitterly and the chief um, result um, achieved resultly in the apostolate for his rehabilitation. Paul gave himself over to insane passion against Christianity and furiously persecuted any and every manifestation of the um, nascent gospel. Nonetheless, as soon as he came to his senses before the sublime call of the Lord, he repented. He repented and his wrong of his wrongs and became one of the most brilliant collaboration, collaboration, collaborators of the triumph of Christianity. There are many, many believers of every kind in the most diverse area of faith. Nevertheless, trouble and doubt reign amongst them because they live immersed in purely verbal interpretations of the heavenly um, revelation in superficial delight in the illusion of the flesh or imprudently attached to the materialistic life for them joy means immediate um, satisfaction of want and peace is the temporary sens sensation of the body of physical well-being without any pain, in order to be able to eat and drink without any hindrance. Therefore, come to your senses under the blessing of Jesus, and then, leaving inactively behind and embracing the incessant endeavor of your redemption, you will be surprised at how dif different life has become. Today, beloved friends, we are being reminded <clears throat> to look at ourselves and see what we are focused on. And again, Emmanuel is using Judas, Mary Magdalene, Peter, and Paul of Tarsus. So, great examples for us. And he uses Judas as an example of someone who didn't have an, another opportunity in that incarnation to redeem himself. But then he uses Mary Magdalene and Peter and Paul as an example of a change of heart, of an awakening, of a coming to senses, as he says. So 
that they focused on the good news, on that which is important, that which is high. And let's see ourselves today. Judas was one of the disciples, as was Peter. But Judas didn't listen to Jesus. He wanted to do his own thing. So if we look in our lives, are we maybe the same as Judas? And you would say, sure, that sounds very out there. But just think about if we sometimes want to do things that is against the teachings of Spiritism because we are still focused on the materialistic things around us, on the here and now and what we can gain in this moment and not the eternal. Then we look at Mary Magdalene. She was caught up in, in life and materialism. And then she, she changed. She um, came to her senses and she followed Jesus. She let everything go and she followed Jesus. Can you and I do that? Can we leave everything behind and follow Jesus? every day, every second, and be this um, disciple of the good news. And then he uses Paul. I'm sorry, it was Peter. Peter was afraid to stand up because he was afraid that he also would, would be um, crucified if he said that he knew Jesus. But Jesus, in his loving way, gave him a look. And he realized the love that was eternal. And so he came to his senses. And after that, also, he went out and focused and he was brave. Are we brave? Then there's Paul. We all know about the book Paul and Stephen, which is also broadcast on Kodak Radio. And we, um, again, the study of Paul and Stephen, which is a very enlightened book to follow again the teachings of Paul and Stephen through Emmanuel by Shiki Shaver. And if we see the high spirits that are used in that book, but back to Paul, Paul also he prosecuted um, the Christians of that time in a very harsh way, but when Jesus spoke to him, he came to his senses. So look at ourselves. Where are we at? Are we still maybe prosecuting each other, um, not helping, not assisting, maybe have bad thoughts, not being the one in spreading the good news? Let's open our ears so that we can hear Jesus because he's always with us so that we also can come to our senses and not prosecute each other. And then Emmanuel says, there are many, many believers of every kind in the most diverse areas of faith. Nevertheless, trouble and doubt reign amongst them because they live immersed in purely verbal interpretations of the heavenly um, revelation in specific delight. Superficial, sorry, delight in the illusion of the flesh or imprudently attached to the materialistic life. So, if we go through our intentions, our thoughts, and there's a word that I'm looking for now that wouldn't come to me, but if we look at ourselves, are we still attached to things? And of course, yes, we are surely, but truly we are here every day so that we can renew ourselves, so that we can let go and learn how to focus on the eternal, on the spiritual life and not on this life around us. From them, joy means immediate satisfaction and of one. And how many times do we 
wants everything now. He wants everything to change now. And that is the thing is that we need to have patience with ourselves and with each other. Because everyone is on a road to evolution, to be pure spirits. And in time, in which time does not exist in eternity, in forever, it never exists actually. But for us to realize that God is patient, He's patient with us, so we can be thankful and use that patience to have patience with others, to be loving and understanding, to know that that is the evolutionary part of each spirit. And so that we can assist in loving kindness like Jesus did, even when he was carrying his cross, he looked at Peter and he had this knowing, loving look in, in his eye. And if we go back to the book Paul and Stephen, you would know that Stephen is explained in the same way. Although he was badly beaten and he didn't even look the same, his eyes were eyes of love and with compassion. And that is a great lesson for you and I. If we go through our trials, do we still have eyes of compassion? Is our being still that of love and understanding? And when we will get there, we will not we will look at everything in a way like Stephen did, because where God he believed where God placed him was necessary. So you and I, beloved friends, are asked to realize what is our place as spirit is. What can we do to do more? What can we give? And he says as well that it is in the work. He says, and peace in deliberate sensations of the body's physical well-being without any pain, in order to be able to eat and drink without any hindrance. Therefore, come to your senses under the blessing of Jesus, and then, leaving in, inactively behind and embracing the incessant endeavor of your redemption, you will be surprised at how different life has become, because our thoughts will be on the good, and we would know that we are loved. Regardless of where we are, we are being loved and so we are being asked to love and to work. And not just to speak, but to, to actually feel it. To do everything in a way of mimicking what we are learning through Spiritism, through the way of Jesus, in all these beautiful books by Nilesio, where he describes our Master in his way of being, in thinking about that, in telling yourself that I'm calm, I'm loving, and to take a breath before reacting or before speaking. Because we know that, especially now, we are being asked to join hands in being more peaceful, in giving out more peace. And that we are being asked to, to watch our words because it's materialized what we say. What are we giving up? So let's work on ourselves together and, and let's come to our senses and let it not be late, too late like Judas did, but let us start now, this day, in this minute. Because we are still here incarnated and we have another chance to renew ourselves. Thank you so much for joining me today. May God bless each and every one until next week. Thank you so much. Bye bye.